Mary Evelyn Tucker is my guest today. She is the co-founder, the co-director of the Forum on Religion and Ecology at Yale University. And I'm going to ask her what she thinks the future of religion and ecology might look like in a post-COVID world. This moment of transformation that you and others have identified is clearly impacting religion in many, many ways. But what I want to suggest and move towards is the emergence of engagement with the world's religions in significant areas. I want to speak specifically on the environment because all of these traditions have had their ways of weaving humans into natural settings. We have the science. We have a lot of the ecological knowledge. We have policy papers. We have law. We've got alternative technologies. But this missing link of a moral force to say that these systems uh, must be protected for the life of the whole, for the well-being of the earth community, people and planet. COVID is a clear example of humans stepping out of the bounds of what ecosystems, what life forms, uh, what animal forms can bear. And so we've overstepped, overshot. But this moral force that's emerging still needing uh, expression. And that's why we're drawing on theologians and historians of religions and the explosion of, of books and articles and studies here is very, very important. Do you see that link between religion and ecology being made in positive ways? Uh, any examples? The United Nations Environment Program has created a Faiths for Earth. And this program is trying to identify all of these engaged projects around the world, they're trying to link this moral force to policy and to science. Also at United Nations Environment Program, there's an extraordinary um, effort, it's about two years old now, called the Interfaith Rainforest Initiative. Within the Catholic Church, we do have this moment with an extraordinary Pope, Pope Francis. And he came out, as we know, five years ago, with a statement, an encyclical called Laudato Si, which means praise be for all the beauty of creation. He really brought this together in what he calls integral ecology. And integral ecology has this conjunction of eco-justice, of people and planet. And the phrase that's used in this encyclical is cry of the earth, cry of the poor. Um, it is, it's had enormous impact in this moment that COVID has given us, do you think people are making that connection between ecology, between religion? So people are making, I think, this connection with the help of scientists and epidemiologists and uh, CDC and Center for Disease Control and so on, um, that the environment impinges on human health. And we, we can't have healthy people on a sick planet. And that's why religions have this possibility of reaching people in the mosque, in the synagogue, in the temple, on the ground. And I think also on another level, you could say on a personal level, this COVID period has really caused people to go into contemplation, reflection, meditation, yoga, <laughs> tai chi, um, the, the things that keep us healthy. So it's, it's a moment of extraordinary reflection. And I think that people are going into that part of themselves that, that nourish life because we're at such a feeling of end times. So as we're pressed back, transformation, renewal does arise. What are your hopes? What do you hope this moment of COVID will teach us? I do think that the world <laughs> will never be the same, clearly that new forms, I think, of religiosity, of spirituality, of a more comprehensive compassion, of a more inclusive ethics for, for, pe for other people, those who are suffering. So that sense of empathy, of compassion, that we are <laughs> unified as a people, but that we're also somehow mysteriously, and all the religions understand this, unified as an earth community with these extraordinary systems which nurture us, river systems, forest systems, 
savannas, <laughs> all of these places, um, the mangroves, the oceans, are places that nourish us. One of the things that's inspired me is in the Confucian tradition, there's a beautiful metaphor for heaven, earth, and human. Heaven being the father, earth being the mother, and the human, that which has come out of the cosmos and the earth and the human. And what developed in that system is filial piety, giving back of care and compassion and nourishment and not over-exploitation of systems. It's an amazing environmental ethics, I would say. That's part of the future.